Hey guys, before we get to the episode, I want to let you know if you haven't heard already, February 18th and 19th of 2021, I'm hosting a free virtual summit for you to come and learn how to grow in the four pillars of your life. That is your business and finances, your relationships, your wellness, and spirituality. I'm bringing together the experts from all over the world that you've seen on my show to share their tips, tricks, and their secrets on how you can level up your life right now. Now, so head over to growthnowsummit.com, grab your free seat now. It's growthnowsummit.com, grab your free seat. You'll be able to see the speaker line up there. I cannot wait to see you guys there, connect with you, and grow a strong relationship so we can all grow together. Again, that's growthnowsummit.com, grab your tickets now. Welcome to the Growth Now Movement. I'm your host, Justin Shank. I'm an entrepreneur, speaker, and podcaster who years ago decided to go on a journey on how to grow in all areas of my life. What I found out was, it's really a matter of focusing on the four pillars of life, business, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. And that's what we do here. We explore how to continuously grow in those areas, all while having a ton of fun doing it. I'm really excited you're on this journey with me. Now let's get to this week's episode. This week, I sit down with Warren Carlisle. As the co-founder of Ready to Propel and Propel Brand Management, Warren is a professional community building strategist who works with purpose-driven brands and influencers to build highly engaged online communities. He's also the founder and CEO of Octonation, the largest octopus fan club, a nonprofit organization that inspires conservation of the ocean by teaching the world about octopus. He and his communities have been featured and gotten the attention of celebrities and global organizations such as Michael B. Jordan, Ellen DeGeneres, Joe Rogan, Facebook, HQ, and more. Warren believes online communities are the lifeblood of a brand's relevance See in today's crowded digital marketplace, and especially now given the global pandemic. You guys are going to love this conversation. Warren co-runs the mastermind with Roberto, who you saw last week. And in this conversation, we dive into building community. Where did that idea even come from? Why is it such a powerful tool? And why do you need a community around what it is you love? And then more importantly, how do you make it a business? And so we dive into all those things. You guys are absolutely going to love this conversation. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me the last couple years, really. I mean, we're coming up on five years with the Growth Now Movement, which is mind-blowing. If you're loving the show, Head over to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, I would love it if to to see that five star rating, to hear what you think of the show, uh, and uh, you know, then tag me on social media. Let me know you did it. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, we'll reach out. Maybe we'll connect. So I really appreciate you guys. Just want to hear what you think. Thank you so much. Now, without further ado, let's get to the episode with Warren Carlisle. Warren, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Justin. What's going on? Uh, I'm excited about the conversation. Obviously, you know, you do you co-run the mastermind. You co-run the mastermind with Roberto, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm- Roberto, Roberto is all about money. I'm all about um, how do you grow? How, how are you deserving of that attention that you have in the group? <laughs> Uh, no, I love it. And so obviously a lot of people who listen to the show are all about money and all about attention and community. And, and that's kind of where you really stick out is building community. So, uh, oh, to backtrack, I'm a part of your mastermind. I joined this year and super excited about the process and growing and, and doing all those things. And I talk all the time about investing in yourself and understanding that there's a great power in putting down money and saying, I'm going to do the work that is then led that that's being led in front of me. And so excited about 2021 because of that, but excited about what you're all about, because you're all about growing community. And I believe in there's a a massive power of togetherness, of drive, of determination, of collective impact when it comes to community. Um, And you're the master of this stuff. So why don't we start with who is Warren today? Uh, And then we'll break down how you got there, how you, how you got started in communities, all that stuff. So Warren today is a community building strategist. Um, I tell people that I help um, manage people's fanatical communities. So people that have very high engagement. Um, I also help build those communities. But um, as far as our agency, we have a brand management agency called Propel. And we work with, um, you know, purpose-driven entrepreneurs that are building fanatical communities. And so we have that. I also am the uh, founder of Octonation, which is the largest octopus fan club. We have close to, we're pushing a half a million members of people that love the octopus. I turned that into an oceanic nonprofit about two years ago. 
And we've since then been, you know, uh, shouted out by Joe Rogan, Ellen DeGeneres. Um, we've done an accelerator programs with Facebook. Um, and I also separately, I teach uh, group admins and page admins on Facebook. I've uh, taught for Facebook a couple of times on how do you really grow an engaged community um, and make sure that you're, you know, not alienating people in the process as you get bigger, you know, how can you really hone in and make sure that the engagement is up, you're growing, you're following, it's all going in the right direction. Cause I think some people hit a plateau and then don't really know where to go from there. And that's kind of where I step in and say, okay, let's, let's strategically campaign build, let's strategically collaborate with individuals that make sense for your brand and not people that just inspire you. So, you know, to me, it's, you really have to prioritize your community's attention span based on really what you want that conversation to be. And so I'm a, a brain. I pretty much spend all day researching conversations, researching, you know, um, <laughs> what the culture is doing right now, what conversations are important, and then prioritizing and uh, working with my community leaders to really facilitate those conversations at a high level. No, I love it. And so how did you even get to this point? Like, look, Facebook groups have been around forever. I've known a couple of people who have done it well uh, in the past, but like, when did, when did you step into this role of community builder? Was it an accident? Was it totally on purpose? Like, how does somebody get to that place? I have um, a really obsessive personality uh, with certain topics. Um, I'm ADD and I hyper focus and I've always been that way my whole entire life. Um, I was an academic decathlon because we got to hyper focus in on something. I was, you know, a classical saxophone uh, player. So I, you know, hyper focused in on that made all state, you know, I, you know, was uh, on the swim team and like really hyper focused in that. And so I've all throughout my life, I've had these very specific interests and gone all in on them. And so um, in 2011, my mom, unfortunately, uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, she passed away six months after she was diagnosed. Wow. And I remember um, I was living in San Antonio at the time and I remember going to Barnes and Noble um, and really being like, what do I want to do? Like, you know, my, I was like 22 and you know, my mom had passed away and I didn't really know what to do with myself. I felt like I was just like, you know, kind of all alone. And I was like, you know, I, I want to. I was like, I, I, I want to move from here. I don't want to be in San Antonio anymore. And so um, my strategic brain popped on and I was walking around and I was just like, if I could be anything, if I could do anything, if I could move anywhere, where, what, what would I want to do? And so I remember walking down the um, magazine section and I saw all these fashion magazines and I always had an interest in kind of like the behind the scenes modeling um, and the, the fashion industry. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I want to move to New York and I'm going to intern for a celebrity fashion photographer and I'm just going to go, go all in. So I got out all these fashion magazines. I got Instagram and I started strategically adding these celebrity fashion photographers, reached out to them, said, I can make sure that behind the scenes, I'm taking photos of you. I can make sure that the talent tags you appropriately on Instagram. I could make sure that, you know, I just, all these list of things that I, I thought they would need. And, um, about two or three weeks after that, um, I got reached out to um, by somebody that I had talked to. And he said, do you live here? And I was like, not, not yet. And he was just like, well, when can you be here? So I ended up moving to New York and became an intern for a celebrity fashion photographer and went from zero to 100 very quickly. I went from, you know, living in San Antonio, Texas, not really knowing the fashion industry to all of a sudden I was the right hand man of a very influential fashion photographer and, um, and it was, it's, it was kind of like a really strange story how that all happened. Um, but after about three or four months of working with him, I, he made me a studio manager. So I started managing all of his strategic partnerships with the brands that he worked with. So like J crew, Todd Snyder, Uniqlo, Mont Blanc. I was in all these, um, marketing meetings and them having conversations about influencers and, you know, who, who were they going to work with and why, and what was the current state of the influencer marketing world back in like 2013. And um, I learned very quickly how brands choose to work with people. And it was just a very fascinating um, conversation to be a part of all the time is like, how are they manufacturing relevancy with cloth? So like your t-shirt, this t-shirt, 
you know, how are they building brands around things that are made up of the same material, but have a different design on them. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at it from a very strategic point. And I was just like, wow, they're depending on who they dress on the clothes, depending on who they choose as models, depending on who they like, what words they associate with the brand, they can manufacture this lifestyle. And that was really intriguing to me. And I think after being there for a while, I was just like, well, if they're doing it, then why can't I do it with something that I'm really fascinated in? And so I took that same model that they were using. And I was just like, I'm, I've always been obsessed with the octopus. And, um, and so I was just like, I'm going to make, uh, and then I started researching the octopus and realized that it was like a really misunderstood animal. I read the book, soul of an octopus. Um, and then I started again, I went back to my strategy brain and I said, okay, if I want to create this community of people, then who's currently serving this market of people who are interested in octopus stuff? You know, where are they currently being served right now? And I started reverse engineering the attention span of somebody who would be interested in this animal. Hmm. And I started building community. And this is something that I think came naturally to me just because of how my brain operates. It's very, it's highly strategic. And it's just, you know, Um, I just went straight for the people who, you know, uh, were having conversations about the octopus. So New York Times bestselling authors, professors that were studying the octopus, um, underwater photographers, um, aquariums. Like I I just went all in and started doing all these um, campaigns with them. And I started building this attention and this community for this animal. And alongside of that, I started working with other individuals um, that were just like, I don't know why my Instagram's not growing. And I was just like, well, let me, let me check it out. And I was very cut and dry. I'm just like, you're not really standing for anything. You're not providing any value. Your content is very superficial. So you're manifesting a superficial audience. And for other people, they were just like mind blown. They were like, how are you seeing this? And I thought to me, it's obvious. Right. Um, and so I rinse and repeat, you know, I started working with brands at, when it related to community building and the rest is history. I mean, I start. I kept on growing Octonation, kept on doing strategic collaborations, kept on getting new clients and growing very niche communities. And um, about what, I mean, I think we're like at 10 years later or something like that after that. Um, you know, we're, we're doing that at a bigger level. We're working with really purpose-driven entrepreneurs because I realized I didn't want to work with people that were just selling a product or, or just selling a, um, something that didn't have a meaning behind it. And so we're very clear with who we work for, with people that want high impact. They want to facilitate high level conversations. Uh, and that's who I'm interested in, in working with now. Yeah. So people that hear that, they now know why I joined your mastermind. Like it, it makes total yeah. sense. Like <laughs> that's exactly who I am, which is, which is crazy. But I think about it, It's funny. You mentioned, you know, niching down like super niche targets and markets and so on and so forth. But you have half a million people in, in Octonation but it's super niche down. A lot of times people hear niche or niche, however you want to say it. I had a whole mm-hmm. debate with somebody about this oh, before, <laughs> um, but you have, you know, you can niche down into a topic, but it doesn't mean your market or your individuals who are interested are small. So talk about that. Like how important is it? And, and how often do you see people try and start a community based off of, Oh, that that's hot right now. I need to start commu- community versus this is something I'm passionate about. And what's the difference and, and how are people approaching it? Yeah, I mean, because I've done this so many times, I have a very clear formula that I, you know, take people through. But the very um, something of value I could offer people on this podcast is you want to know, you want to very clearly define who and what. And the more vague those two things are, the more you have the potential to alienate your audience. So let me give you an example. So when I say who and what, I say who is the community for and what is the community about? And so some people will tell me, well, I want to help women entrepreneurs um, uh, with their blocks. I go, okay, you would think that that'd be niche, but there's a lot of opportunity within that to alienate a woman who doesn't, who has a different type of blog. So if you want to help a woman that, that has a blog, what if she has a science blog where she, um, she sells oddities. So maybe she, um, sells specimens like wet specimens or something like that. Cause I've worked with a lot of different bloggers. And so say somebody, um, uh, like, I don't know, just all these different types of niche, niche blogs. What happens is if you try to be for all of those women who have all these niche blogs, 
what happens is, is you're making the assumption that people have the ability to reframe your, your broad strategy to their niche thing. And in this day and age, people don't have that capacity. And what happens is if you post something and it doesn't apply to the majority of your audience, then not only do you have the alienating thing that's happening, then you have the algorithm working against you because the algorithm is looking at how relevant is this conversation to 100% of your audience. And the more you chip away at that pie, the more the algorithm goes, this isn't a meaningful community because this person isn't aware of the dynamics of, of their community. And so we're just going to not show it to many people. And we're going to focus on the people that understand who their community is for and what it's about. And so, of course, there's people that have massive communities but they also have massive marketing budgets. And so they can um, look at their different market segments like Nike, and they can funnel influencers to different market segments. They have tennis, they have basketball, and they have different influencer marketing campaigns. Right. But a lot of people, they're not starting like Nike, but they're, um, but they're creating brands that are very like, I want to help you know, everybody lose weight. It's like, you can't do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, like that's the algorithm, you know, it doesn't work like that. And um, you're going to alienate a lot of people who can't lose weight for a lot of different reasons. Um, say they have a medical condition, say they have say, you know, so there's a lot of different things. And so when I get down to like having the conversation about niching, I really get into the conversation about like, who's the community for? What is the community about? And also what is your story? How, how are you really telling that story? So people go, yeah, you're the person to run this community. It makes complete sense. Like, wow. you know, um, I worked with a woman who um, came to me as a life coach and she said, I help women who have chronic pain. And I said, the issue is going to be is people are going to come in this community and they're going to have chronic pain, but they're going to come in and they're going to, I have lupus, you know, they're going to come in and say, I have, you know, chronic migraine. They're going to come in, they're going to say, I have these other chronic pains. And then they're going to start positioning their, their pain against each other. And it's going to be hard to cater to the, all of those, those attention graphs. So I said, what do you specifically want to have conversations about? And it came, come to find out she's suffered chronic debilitating migraine ever since she was two. And I said, well, then why don't we just work with the women who are suffering chronic debilitating migraine and promise that, promise that you're going to help them get more done throughout the day. You're going to help them mitigate their pain. And so once she made that shift and we started looking at um, organizations that catered to that community, like the, the um, National Headache Foundation, the um, Association of Chronic um, well, the Association of um, Migraine, I think, disorders or something like that. She blew up in the industry because she was very clear, clearly defined on who she helped, what her positioning was, what her background was. And it all made sense to position her in that market as the leader. Hmm. So there's some people who just want to kind of dilute their brand by really not by being kind of like in the gray area. But it's long term, it doesn't build a fanatical community. And that's what I'm interested in, in helping my clients build is that highly engaged fanatical community that can clearly articulate what the community is about and who belongs in it. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And, and it's so true. And I think sometimes, I mean, in, including myself, and I've, I've gotten more niche in the last year or two, um, but I've been very mm -hmm. broad and it's, it's helped in certain ways, uh, as far as growing a listener base and doing that type of thing. But if I didn't get niche down enough, that's what they are. They're a listener base. Well, where's the, and you'd be happy and you, you'd be happy to know that I've, I've worked with people that have come in and they have 1 million, 2 million, 3 million people communities. And they're like, Oh, have I, have I gotten too big to where I can't niche anymore? And it's, it's not the case. I just had a conversation um, a couple of weeks ago with Shalene Johnson, who has the number one um, infomercial for Beachbody. Um, and I think it's in the world, like it's a Guinness world record or something like that. And so she's known for a lot of different things, but what she is known for right now is helping business owners grow effectively using Instagram. And she has something called Insta club hub. And, you know, we're, we were having a conversation and, um, uh, she had posted online about recently being diagnosed with ADD, having her brain scanned. And then her, her father uh, was recently diagnosed with ADD. And I said, that would be a, like a very good anchoring thing to, to, you know, to really understand and to be for people who are easily distracted, you know? And, uh, so now you can see on her, um, her social media, 
and she might have been going in this direction already and tapping more into it, but she really went all in just recently to where she says she she helps easily distracted entrepreneurs, um, you know, grow a business that they love, you know, using Instagram. And because of that, what she's found is that her engagement's gone through the roof. People can clearly um, articulate who she's for. They can they clearly understand that she has products and services that can help them. She has a push journal that helps her get through her day. And so because she's doing that, it's just, she can grow more affinity. There's more emotion behind, you know, being for that. So the more and more you kind of tap into your values of what makes you, you, no one can compete with that. No one can compete with the fact that she, she has that specific type of ADD and she has that background of being, you know, a multimillionaire. She is the champion for other people to be hyper successful and also be mitigating ADD. So I think that's a more powerful story than just being for anybody that wants to grow a business on Instagram. No, I love that. And obviously very familiar with Shailene. I have a client who's like really yeah. good friends with her. So um, just phenomenal. And I've seen her make those tweaks and those movements without realizing where it came from, which is kind of cool to hear you talk about that. Um, you know, when I, when I think about community, I think there's a lot of people out there who want to build community and they're not 100% clear <laughs> on what it is they need to lead. They want to be a leader, but they're not clear on what that is. What would you say to those individuals? Because I'm sure you've helped them to be like, I want to lead. I want to build a community, but I feel too scattered. I feel too all over the place. How do you um, uh, dissect yourself to figure out this is what I'm supposed to lead? I think you, you really have to be curious about the given topic that you're um, studying. Like you have to have an innate passion for it. There's a lot of programs that they see where it's like, choose your niche or choose your, your whatever. Um, and you can get involved in something. I mean, there's plenty of people who, you know, create, they're called Finstas so that, you know, they create these, these profiles and they, they just want to give it a go. They want to see um, whether or not they like the space, they like the industry um, and they go in and they have interviews with people. But I would say, you know, choose a topic um, that, that really inspires you. And I've worked with people, you know, that have, that like they're living their passion and they're getting paid for what they love to do. Like I mentioned that, um, that one scientist who works out of her house and she sells, um, wet specimens. Like she, and what I, what I mean by that is she sells like, um, like animals and like little globes. Um, she, uh, she like sells like, uh, yeah, like, a, oh. like, a, um, it's, I mean, they're, they're animals that have passed away for whatever reason. But like, I mean, less morbid, um, worked with people that have like their largest Gilmore Girls fan club, worked with people that, you know, um, dad's married to doctors. So um, dad specifically that um, have a wife um, who is a doctor and they are in a different role in the household. And so like, you know, it's whatever your unique situation is, odds are there's a community that is there that just that that hasn't been led yet um so if you have the ability and i call it um being content dj because that's really what i do with octonation my background isn't in science i don't have any science background whatsoever i just had an intense fascination with the octopus and so i said i can be the person who curates the best information about this because i'm probably the most curious in a sense where I have questions about octopus tattoos. I have questions about underwater photography and videography. I, I, I really want to understand all of the different species and what their superpowers are. And there had been nobody who had done that before. And yeah. so I introduced that to the world um, in a way that, that made them obsessed with the octopus. Um, and so if you have that thing that you're really interested in or, or have that topic, um, Another thing that I'll say is the answer to, to who doesn't always have to be you. Um, as a community leader, you're not responsible for the transformation of 100% of your audience. So I always tell people, I'm not like trying to convince everybody to love the octopus. There's plenty of people who love the octopus and can go out there and they can talk to people about it. Like, I'm not going to come up to people and just be like, you have to love this animal. <laughs> and so getting people on your, um, like even you, you know, having this podcast, you know, bringing on people that maybe have the same mission, vision, core values as you are, and maybe even teach on the same subject or have the same thing, but they're, they're teaching it from their lens. So their perspective. So say they have a big family 
And um, somebody out in your audience was just like, you know, Justin, I've been following you for years, but you brought in that guy who's, you know, is very similar to you, but he has a big family. And I finally understood what you were talking about because I needed to hear it through that guy's perspective and lens because that's my perspective and, and my lens. And so I always think that, you know, bringing more people into the mix, that's truly what builds community is not being a person that's constantly just syndicating content and just, having to be the only one that like makes sense of things. It's like, bring on other people, have them make sense of things. Um, because I, f- I feel like that, that builds more of like a trust w- to the community later. So, yeah. yeah, no, totally. And, and I love that. So I, I have a question for you just out of curiosity. When you started Octonation, was it like, I'm going to build the world's largest community and make it a business? Or was it like, uh, I just like octopus and this is what I'm going to build. No, it was actually, I was watching all of these um, fashion brands and I was watching all of these influencers uh, and I was consulting with some of these influencers. So like, say I, you know, I was working with a fitness influencer that had like 2 million followers and he was looking at selling an ebook and he was just like, um, you know, I, I need your help on you know how to sell this and what to title this. And I said, I don't think the ebook's going to sell. And he was like, why? And I was like, because you you haven't, like, you don't have any content where you're actually teaching people how to work out. You have a very like, you know, very surface level brand in the sense where you show your cars, you show, you know, the girls that you're with, you show your outings. And I was like, it's a very mysterious brand. And I was like, so I doubt anybody's going to want to buy an ebook from you. And I was like, you have to create a content campaign, at least for the next two or three months where you're teaching people how to achieve your level of fitness before you, sh- you should sell the product. And he was like, no, no, I, you know, I don't believe you, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it was unsolicited advice. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong. So he went and he had this ebook ghost written or whatever, and he tried to sell it. And I think he sold like 12 or 13 copies out of oh 2 gosh. million followers. That's crazy. Out of 2 million people. And so it just kind of reaffirmed, okay, I, I really know what I'm doing. Like, you know, I'm on to something. Like I, I understand campaign building. I understand being deserving of attention and ethically selling to your community based on what you're talking about on a daily basis, basically being deserving of your community attention. And if you're not, it's surface level, then you're going to have surface level comments, surface level results. You know, it's not going to really move mountains. And so with all of that, when I was looking at that, I was like, well, why don't I do it with something that I love? And like I said, I've always had this uh, fascination for the animal and I was just like, okay, that's going to be my, my thing. So I didn't go into it thinking this is going to be the, like, I'm going to create this large business, this, you know, whatever. But as I started researching more and more, I started realizing, wow, the reason that this animal, the octopus, isn't such a big thing, like, you know, like the turtle or whales, um, is because they've been widely misunderstood and misrepresented in Hollywood movies um, you know, people don't really understand them. So they like pit them as like this slimy, malicious creature. You yeah. know, you had Ursula and Little Mermaid. You had like 20,000 leagues under the sea. You have them constantly attacking and being malicious. And I was like, and you're, you don't have any representations of them in Hollywood as like superheroes, magnificent, older than dinosaurs, survive mass extinctions. They're still thriving. None of them are endangered. So it's like, to me, I was like, we need to, I want to, I want to tell that story and see what happens. And so I started doing that and, um, it blew up. So do you think that you're the reason um, behind the, my octopus teacher taking off? Let's be honest. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. No, I don't, I don't have that big of an ego to where I feel like that <laughs> that's the reason I, I definitely do think that we set a stage for something like that to be, um, to be received a little bit better. Um, but I mean, I think if anything, my octopus teacher helped Octonation in the sense where it was the first time people saw the octopus being a compassionate character. Um, and people, when they saw, wait a minute, octopuses, they can remember who you are. They have short term, they have long term memory. They can develop a relationship with a human. Um, people started becoming very curious because it, they had never seen that before. And I got, thousands of requests into the Facebook group of people being like, I just want to learn more information about the animal. So, yeah. So I I think people are finally waking up to how like insanely cool they are and how like, there's just so many different kinds and depending on where they live in the ocean, they have like really unique superpowers that allow them to be masters of that environment. And that's kind of what I want to showcase um, 
with the nonprofit. That and another thing I saw out there was that there were a lot of um, other nonprofits that were marketing based on pollution. Um, so they were showing massive amounts of pollution and saying, you should care, or they were showing the mistreatment of animals and they were saying, you should be mad about this and do something about it. And Optimation is like, w- we don't believe in disempowering language. So we're not going to backhandedly show you images and be like, we should get riled up and change the world. Cause I really feel like the internet is already has enough of that. And I wanted Optimation to be a place that was like, you know, positive, uplifting, um, uh, that would inspire wonder of the ocean and come to find out that's what's really, um, I think resonating in the market is people are just like, wow, Octonation is so not problematic. Like a lot of these other, you know, organizations that are just like constantly, you know, showing, you know, the turtle with a straw in its nose. It's like, there's only so many times we can see that before we just shut down and feel bad. Yeah. You know, and I feel like yeah. if, we're, if we're not anchored to any real information, then we don't know what to do with that anger. And we just kind of are just like, well, we turn into like these nihilistic people where it's just like, well, the, the planet screwed. We messed up. <laughs> like there's no yeah, coming back from here. It's crazy. So you talk <laughs> about, you know, how how do we niche down into this you know community? How do we lead it? What do we do next? Like, what is the next steps once we once we figured out this is the community I want to lead? What do people do? Where do they where do they start to build this? What's all the good stuff? So with that, I mean, you really have to start getting into, and this is, you know, really where I work at developing, I call them campaigns because in the fashion industry, you have to think like they have seasons, right? You have seasons where you have these fashion campaigns. I think it's no different. If you're a community leader, you constantly need to be um, uh, ideating your next campaign. So imagine you as a community leader, almost like you're releasing Netflix series or Netflix specials. Um, you are a media company and you're responsible for figuring out what do you want to create in the marketplace? Um, now that we have a decentralized attention graph and everybody is a media company that has a cell phone, what wild, crazy, cool idea do you have? You know, who do you want to work with that you thought you could never work with? Like, what do you want to happen in the world? Um, because you have the ability to make it happen. And so, you know, to give you an example with Octonation, you know, I've worked with, you know, Disney animators to teach my community how to draw an octopus. And this was something that I just decided one day I wanted to do. And so that's like, you know, you can really create campaigns to, to strengthen the affinity that your community has with you as a community leader. Um, and you can do it like strategically, but you also have to have like a kind of an end goal in mind, like really what, what do you want? Um, what are you trying to get out of this? Um, you know, what is the value or what is the mission and the vision of your, of your community with Octonation? Our mission is to inspire wonder of the ocean by teaching the world about octopuses. And our vision is to become a global leader in marine wildlife education, research, and conservation. And so if I, if that vision is, is the vision then it makes sense that I partner with brands like Facebook who have access to billions of people. It makes sense that I, I do these large scale um, uh, collaborations because my vision is to become a global leader. So I don't look at anything small now. Um, I, look at, I look at partnering in very big, meaningful ways with big, meaningful brands. And um, I think once you're led by that vision and the mission, then you don't really, you're not really lost with, okay, well, what do I do today? Like, you're, you're less emotional and you're more like, this is my mission. This is my vision. So if, if that's my vision, then, then I need to formulate these campaigns that are in line with what that vision is. Um, and then you just go after it. So, you know, that's how I partner with aquariums all over the world. It's how I partnered with, you know, um, uh, like Nepris, which is like a, because of the pandemic and all these kids not being able to go to school, I was like, okay, well, we still need to reach and we need to educate kids. So how am I creating a solution for, for kids that are all over the world virtually. And so I, you know, partnered with Nepris, which is a huge virtual platform that has access to a lot of teachers. And so I'm just always constantly thinking um, because of that vision, okay, what, you know, what am I going to do next? You know, and um, how is it going to be big? How is it going to be meaningful? And how is it going to move, move me closer to be becoming that global leader? Cause I'm not quite there yet. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm patient. <laughs> so you're, I'm kind of patient. Getting closer. Yeah, you're certainly getting closer. I mean, especially with this partnership with Facebook, and I don't know how much you can share that or not, but um, that's yeah. something that's super exciting for you to to really partner with. Are you able to share about that or no? Um, 
I believe so. I mean, we've already done some activations. Um, we're one of four communities chosen for the the More Together campaign. So the same campaign that um, is featured at the Super Bowl and is featured, you know, in New York Times Square. Um, their showcasing Off Donation is just, you know, one of the most meaningful communities on Facebook, and uh, something that you should um, that showcases that there's a group for everybody. Because um, I really think the future is in those communities that people are really interested in. Um, and Facebook wants to spotlight that because I think they know that too, that the future is deep, meaningful connections and, and communities. And so um, if you have that inside of you, um, you know, really unpack that and start and start thinking, okay, you know, how do I curate this experience? Um, and, you know, that's what me and Roberto, um, you know, we're, we're starting that community leader association uh, because we really want to work with people who want to facilitate those deep, meaningful uh, connections that are bound by a set of ethics, because it can get pretty um, spammy and salesy out there. And so we want to make sure that we're holding people accountable. Um, and so we're really excited to to be launching that, um, I think, this next month. So That's exciting. Talk a little bit more about that, just to let people know what they can look forward to. Yeah. The, so the Community Leader Association, we really decided that me and Roberto, after I I attended the Facebook um, community summit and had conversations. And since then I've had conversations with hundreds of of community leaders that run these really meaningful communities that are really changing um, the world uh, in their own way. Um, We noticed that a lot of people, when they think about the word influencer, they look to people like Kim Kardashian or they look at these fashion influencers, but there are plenty of people that are running groups on Facebook that have some, sometimes a million, two million, three million people in the groups, but they're for something that's like, that is, is impacting or, or teaching people. Like there's um, Latasha Morrison, she runs uh, Be the Bridge, which is um, all about racial reconciliation. And it's a, a very impactful group that a lot of people are a part of. Um, and we, we really realized that people um, that our community leaders needed a, a place to go to sharpen their skills uh, and to go for emotional support. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of stress that comes with being a community leader and managing a lot of, you know, um, a lot of different, you know, emotions and thoughts and conversations, especially in, you know, 2020. And yeah, but we won't get into any of that. But really just, we want, we really wanted uh, just that, that space where people um, who were community leaders could come together. And really what we noticed more than anything was that they were having trouble monetizing um, and that there wasn't really any place that these, these community leaders that were doing this amazing work could go to have a conversation, an honest conversation about money. Um, because a lot of them, they, they're running these communities, but they're still working a, a day job uh, but they have communities that have 500,000, 200, you know, 200,000 people. Even if you have 10,000 people or 600 people in your group, we know people that are, that they're, the group is their full-time job, essentially. Right. Um, so having a, having a place that where we can bring them all together and teach community leaders how to create that sustainability so that they can continue to do what they love to us was extremely important. And that's where Roberto is really the mastermind behind that. I really teach people how to do that, that campaign building. I'm obsessed with being deserving of people's attention, um, collaborating with, with people and having really meaningful conversations um, and teaching people that Roberto's like, okay, that's great. How are we making this sustainable? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he's always, always checking me uh, and checking the, the people that I work with in our brand management agency. He's like, this is great. This is a great conversation. What products, programs, services, um, membership, um, uh, uh, affiliate pro- uh, sponsorships, advertising, like he's all about, you know, this is great work that you're doing, but great work needs to be monetized. So he's a great balance to the equation. No, I, I love it. So, you know, obviously with this podcast, I get the opportunity to interview some of the most successful people in the world, which is why I'm excited to sit down and chat with you. But my question for you is, what's your definition of success? And what are three things you do every single day to ensure that success for yourself? My definition of success is, hmm, this is a really good question. Um, I might have to get back to everybody on this one because I'm a deep thinker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I've always really been big on 
um, don't tell me, show me in a sense. And so I'm really big on people um, not only talking about things, but executing on things. And that's why I really love having the brand management agency because I get an opportunity to create um, campaigns and to curate conversations out there in the world that actually happen and have a profound impact. And we see that by not us you know, judging based on money or us ju judging based on, you know, whatever, but by all the conversations, by all the meaningful conversations, you know, you see on people's Instagram accounts, um, them saying great post, or this is cool, or great job, or fire emojis. You know, the community leaders that we work with, people write paragraphs in their comment mm. section. Uh, people are having profoundly different experiences. And the people that we work with, it's not a surface level, you know, connection. It's a, you know, they feel inspired um, to to really, you know, have these meaningful conversations, to really comment on other people's comments, to really, you know, um, to really have those conversations. And I feel like that's a completely different environment in, a, in a, an environment that I want to be a part of and not the environment that's just like, you know, hey, here's my new car or like, you know, if, if you don't have it, you don't want it bad enough, the hustle culture. Like, I just can't get behind that because I can't sink my teeth into anything meaningful there. Um, it's just a statement. And so I always feel like, you know, to go back to your question, because I don't think I have three things on a daily basis is I'm just constantly looking at the social proof of the, the, um, the campaigns and the conversations that we're starting, you know, are people showing up, are people commenting, are people understanding what we're saying? And are we seeing evidence of that in the comment section? Um, or are we not? And that, to me, I feel like that's a really that's a really great judge of success. And the 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 indicator that more people need to look at is look at your comment section. <laughs> if people yeah. aren't if people aren't commenting, if there's not deep, profound transformations taking place, if other people don't feel comfortable, you know, um, reaching out to people in your comment section, we have to figure out how do we create that environment because um, you can do it strategically. Um, and if people are interested in doing that, then I suggest they they come and join um, or come be a part of me and Roberta's uh, Community Leader Association. Yeah, that's incredible. So I wrap up every single interview with the same question. But before I get there, how do people get a hold of you? How do they sign up for this association? Where do you want to send people? So for me, if, if you, um, I have a, on my website, warrencarlisle.com. Um, and you can put it in the show notes. Um, I have, if you're interested in a quick, um, quick tips on how to grow on Instagram, I, I can take you through a quick process there. It's like one of the, the, the freebies that I have as far as the community leader association, um, goes, if you, um, join the group, uh, community growth and profits right now, um, uh, then I think that'd be the, probably the best place for you to go. Um, you can also, go to um what's it called uh warren if, if you just want to email me warren at warrencarlisle.com um and be like hey where's this community leader association at um it's still uh we're, we're still excited about it. we're still like talking about you know where we're going to market it and how we're going to market it first so just stay tuned to us you know in that group the community growth and profits awesome definitely check that out guys look these are individuals that I was willing to say, yes, I'm trusting you with what I've built so far to take me to the next level. So take advantage of any opportunity you have to work with them. Highly recommend it. Roberto will be on the show. I don't know what order this is coming out. I'm interviewing him in a couple of weeks, so they'll <laughs> both be on at some point. You guys will get all that stuff. But uh, Warren, like I said, I wrap up every single interview with the same question. And that is in your life, what has been your biggest moment of growth? I mean, it's kind of sad, but I would say that when my mom passed away in 2011, um, I think the reason I'm so strategic with everything that I do is because tomorrow is not promised. Um, and if, if you want to make an impact, um, then don't wait for, you know, the future to be like, I need to have this many followers before I reach out to X person and facilitate this really powerful conversation. Uh, the people that I work with and the reason I'm so purpose driven is because my mom didn't get that ability to live out her full life because of cancer. And so I'm just on this new path now where it's just like, if you want, if you're lit up by something, 
create, facilitate that community around it, entertain those conversations, reach out to those, those big brands, start those conversations. And you at least owe it to yourself to say, well, you know, what is the process of working with you or what, you know, what does it look like? How does someone do that? Like be curious about it. Um, and I think because of that curiosity and because of that, that passion of mine, I make things happen very quickly and people are like, I don't know how you're so confident. And I really attribute it to that. It's like, you know, I lost my mom when I was you know 22 and now, you know, w- when I want something to happen or if I want to make a connection or if I want to be connected to someone, I make it happen that week. <laughs> I figure oh, it out. And so, yeah, I, I recommend that your, your listeners do the same thing. It's just like, just be on fire and, and make things happen sooner rather than later. Perfect. Warren, thank you so much, man, for coming on and sharing your wisdom with my audience. I'm sure we'll have you on again in the future, but this has been incredible. So thank you so much. For sure. Talk to you soon, Justin. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Growth Now movement. This is how you can really help me out. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. And let's grow this movement to epic heights. And it's all going to be because of you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.